Thank you so much, Akeem. We now have uh, Christian Schatz, who will be reading to us from a journalistic piece that he's been doing uh, called Planetary Health on the Bleeding Island. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Christian Schatz, and I have the honor to uh, finish up our presentations tonight. And for this project, I've created an ethnographic and journalistic piece of writing that connects my own personal experience with the larger systemic issues of planetary health. And I'll be reading a selection from that for you this evening. When we flew over the river deltas, they were painted red, muddy vessels flowing out into the ocean. From space, Madagascar bleeds the red of her lost soil. This symptom has a clear cause, deforestation. As farmers burn away forests and replace them with developed land, rains wash Madagascar's clay red soil into the streams and out to sea. Conservationists ring alarms at the increasing global trend of lost forest, lost biodiversity, lost species. I rode in a canoe up a stream feeding such red rivers on the way to Antaravatu. I passed small gossy men and women along the riverbanks holding machetes with pieces of wood, baskets with goods transported between field, forest, and village. For them, the pieces of land converted from forests to rice paddies and cow fields symbolize food at the table in Madagascar's unpredictable environment. But the rice farmer and the cow herder do not stand at odds with the forest. Rather, the fact that climate unpredictability is a common feature of life in Madagascar puts the Malagasy men and women in a position of dependence on the forest. The forest is a place of food, a place of medicine, a place of spiritual strength, and a place of identity. In witnessing men carrying bundles of wood upon their backs, agricultural runoff flow muddy into the river, women washing clothes by the banks, men herding cows through the water, I witness an ecological, economical, and moral dilemma reaching far beyond the deceptively simple term of deforestation. Could any conservationist in conviction ask a mother or a father to save an abstract idea of biodiversity over feeding their children? Could any Westerner lay claim to the forest for the sake of saving it, when a people has lived in intimate connection to that forest for hundreds of years? The relationship between human community, the rainforest, and water does not intimate an obvious solution. I did not realize in this moment that my sickness upon the river shared in these interconnected relationships. <laughs> Within 24 hours, I left in Tarvatu, made my way back down the river's mosaic vistas, was picked up by a jeep in the comfort of a hotel and seen by a doctor. A day later, the doctor diagnosed me with amoebic dysentery, and I was given a substantial regimen of anti-parasite, anti-bleeding, and antibacterial pharmaceuticals. With access to safe water and food, rest, and medicine, I recovered in about a week. In a moment, nothing about this experience of sickness and health struck me as special. The banality of it struck me more than all else. I had come to observe an emerging scientific field in a region of the world unlike anything I experienced before, but instead of spending time in the research, I spent time in a sickbed. In repose and reflection, the poetic significance of the situation began to strike me. As a Westerner traveling to Madagascar, gastrointestinal issues of some variety are almost inevitable. In the tropical climate, my body encountered all sorts of new microorganisms every time I took a drink of water or a bite to eat. But unlike the people local to Madagascar, I can purchase safe water and antibiotics. I can buy my health. Diarrheal diseases, like dysentery, contribute significantly to the rates of morbidity and mortality in the developing world, especially among children. Nearly 1.7 billion cases of diarrheal diseases occur every year, killing 525,000 children under five and causing malnutrition for those who recover. Planetary health links the public health problem of diarrheal diseases to ecological drivers. A seminal study in the planetary health community synthesizing data from 35 countries, including Madagascar, tested the effects of upstream water cover conditions on human health. The results show that increased upstream forest cover decreases the probability of diarrheal diseases in children to the same degree as other socioeconomic factors. A 30% increase in upstream tree cover results in a similar effect as an improved sanitation facility. While the study found that deforestation did not have a significant effect on urban areas, other studies suggest that upstream forest cover can benefit the overall sustainability and safety of a city's drinking water. Moreover, upstream forest cover does not create cleaner water merely by displacing upstream human development. Rather, forest cover can actively increase the safety of drinking water, suggesting some sort of biological mechanism for filtering the water. 
In contracting amoebic dysentery, I viscerally took part in the very thing planetary health aims to understand, except I do not have the same stake in the forest as the inhabitants of Antarabatu. I merely sat upon a canoe moving up and down, but that river signifies far more for those whom I passed on my way. I was sick for a little while, retreating the privileged forms of health and rest, but a child in Taravatu lay sick much longer, for what else is there to drink but the river? And this is the poetic cemetery. Just as the soils of Madagascar bleed out into the ocean, so do the muddied waters bleed inside of the ailing bodies of Malagasy men and women, boys and girls suffering from diarrheal diseases. Though the development of the forest brings health and well-being to some, the protection of the forest protects the physical well-being of the whole island. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian. So before I take us over to head over to the food, drink, music, and photo exhibit, I think two of the students just wanted to say thank you to all of you, and also, even though it will embarrass her, to Jen. Thank <laughs> you.